We here at Badger Incorporated are delighted to announce our partnership enterprise with the Death Company, who I am reliably informed are a legitimate business registered for tax purposes. That's right, the Blood Angels painting journey continues this week with the Death Company. Thank you so much to Emperor for sending me this box of jump pack intercessors. They are the perfect starting point for me to be able to build my own death company. Emperor are an online store that are well known for their low prices on GW products and an amazing loyalty point system. They're an option for our Australian viewers, so if you find yourself anywhere else in the world, I'll add some links and discounts for you in the video description for a store that's local to you. The models in this kit are armed with some pretty stock standard weapons, such as bolt pistols and chainsaws. So if you'd like something more eye-catching and heavy duty on the battlefield, I'll show you exactly how you can achieve it. I start by having a look at the data sheet to see what different options there are for me. So it tells me on here that I can swap out their bolt pistol for a variety of different heavy pistol options. Nice. I can swap out their chainsaw for power fists. I like that or I can get rid of everything and give them thunder hammers. Oh my, it's hammer time. Thanks to online stores having some great alternative 3D prints, I'm able to purchase files or have them printed and shipped to me because I don't own a printer myself. So for an affordable price, I have five high quality thunder hammers, shoulder pads, and some extra bits to create a squad that is unique to my army. Remember, if you're using plastic glue for your models, use super glue for your resin pieces. Now, if I know that I've made a mistake, I like to show you rather than try to hide it. Prime the bases of your models before you add any sand or basing materials. I'm about to glue my sand on and there's no primer down. Then the whole lot will want to peel off in one piece once it's dry. Well, I'm sorry to hear that primed in black and now it's time for me to decide on how I'd like to paint these marines. Recently in a video I painted the terminator power armour of the death watch captain for Arjak in that classic neat layering style that we're used to from Games Workshop. My army is being painted in the grim dark weathered stipple style and we were wondering how it would look for black armour, well let's find out. For larger panels, I'm using tweezers with a piece of packing foam and dabbing the centre of the areas, beginning with a 50-50 mix of black and the fang. For any smaller or hard to reach areas, you will see me swap the foam out for a thin brush. Speaking of brushes, I'm often asked what brushes I use when I paint. From day one on the channel, I've used Rosemary & Co and I love them as an affordable and long lasting high quality brush. I'm very fortunate to now be sponsored by them, but that is as a result of me always using them and chasing them down to a range of sponsorship. I'll add a link below if you'd like to discover just how good they are and the particular ones that I use. I'll add some information for you along the way about what types of paint that I'm using, but instead of simply a tutorial today, how about I tell you a little bit about who the Death Company are and how they fit into the lore of the Blood Angels and into my army. We currently find ourselves operating in the 41st millennium. However, some 10,000 years ago, the Primarch of the Blood Angel Space Marines was slain by Horus, the War Master of the Emperor of Mankind. This incredible act of heresy and the death of Sanguinius sent a psychic backlash so strong that it burnt an impression on the genetic coding of the Blood Angels Marines. These red crosses on their shoulder pauldrons are to represent the wounds taken by Sanguinius when he was slain. The Marines now find themselves afflicted with a curse known as the Red Thirst. This genetic flaw is best described as a craving for blood that first begins to creep into their subconscious thoughts and dreams, giving them visions of battle. However, over time, this thirst can continue to develop and take over beginning to occupy their waking thoughts. Once the red thirst consumes them, it manifests into black rage. Rage?
With the Black Rage having taken control of the Marine, they leave their squad, don the black armour and fight in the Death Company under the guidance and control of the Reclusiarchy. Chaplains are spiritual figures within the Space Marine ranks and those in the Blood Angels are capable of communicating with these Death Company soldiers, guiding them and then releasing them into battle. Rather than suffering and agonising and slow death, these Marines take the opportunity to band together for combat and seek opportunity for a swift and brutal conflict ending in their own demise. If this is how the Death Company find themselves in Warhammer 40k, then what circumstances must exist for us to find them in a smaller force that is cut off from support and resupply on a forsaken world? The Marines in Strike Force Forlorn Peril were still reeling after suffering crushing losses in their ranks at the talons of the Great Devourer, and a change in command when they saw their leader fall, promoting Lieutenant Sirius Corridan to Captain. Already being pushed to their limits, this company were then assigned with the mission of delivering a reprisal strike deep into the heart of High Fleet Leviathan. Suffering self-doubt and being exposed to prolonged conflict cut off from support and resupply has been a spawning ground for the red thirst within each of my marines. I plan to add a chaplain to my company in support, but despite his commitment to faith, there are too many of his brothers requiring guidance and it would take a contingent of the reclusiarchy to keep the cancerous subconscious thoughts at bay. The Red Thirst is building within the ranks and the Black Rage has already come for several of these Astartes. The patchy and scuffed black armour they wear is a true reflection of their own time-sensitive artistry and the close combat they find themselves embroiled in with an unrelenting adversary. If everything is so grim, the combat so brutal and their armour is forged between volleys of death, then why is the gold trim so shiny? A fair question. I tested a little with a darker version like Balthazar Gold first, but honestly everything was just so dark. Black armour, dark gold trim, dark red accent panels, I felt like nothing was actually going to help them stand out on the ruined battlescape. The eyes will glow green and their jetpack vents will burn a bright hot blue, but I don't think that those accents alone will be able to carry these marines. So I've decided to go with a bright gold. Give me an idea story-wise why you believe these Death Company Marines could have bright gold trim on their armour. Let me know below. Already some ideas that come to mind might be that it's the civilian inhabitants of this world that are cleaning and decorating this portion of their armour moments prior to battle, knowing that they are presenting each Marine for their final moments and it's a way of honouring their sacrifice. But you're smarter than me, so what have you got? Our Death Company Sergeant here has decided to remove his helmet, take one hand off his thunder hammer, and focus the remainder of his sanity instead on holding aloft the cup of the carpenter. He chose poorly. And speaking of this Sergeant, I wonder how rank works within the Death Company. I can see how a Marine of any rank can succumb to the Black Rage and be assigned to the Death Company and in theory still hold their rank. But if Berserk Fury created by horrific hallucinations have taken control of them and they require the direct guidance of a chaplain to function, surely a sergeant in a squad like this isn't actually performing the role of a veteran leader. So I picture in a squad of five marines, you could in theory have two of them that hold the rank of sergeant. On the data sheets, there's no mention of sergeants or war gear options for them, so I could have my head around this. Might not though. If you aren't a fan of the close to earth poses of these marines, then you can consider some jetpack smoke STLs and prints that you can obtain online like I used for my inceptors. This time around, and for a squad of five, I'm happy that they remain in this bounding pose, but I would like to show you that their jetpacks are active and glowing hot.
Using my airbrush, I've sprayed titanium white ink from Liquitex. I put that on first where the center of what I'm spraying will be the middle of the vents, and I allow the areas that overspray to be where the light is cast. Fluorescent blue over the top tints that bright white to look like a hot plasma style blue, and I enjoy this look, but you do what you think's cool. If my marines were a lighter color, like yellow or white, I would probably brush on a black pigment powder around the ports as exhaust weathering. I'm ready to call them complete, and after we check them out, we can talk a little about what units I can add next to my Blood Angels. Without further delay, here are the Death Company Assault Marines with Jetpacks for Strike Force Forlorn Peril. These were a lot of fun to build and paint, including this guy who was just pointing at his hammer. This reminds me of the way that when you were mucking around as a kid and you were on your final warning and your parent would just point to the wooden spoon. Oof, no words were said. It still hurts when I sit. Flashing Badger Painting now has merch. I know I should probably instead just focus on learning how to paint a half decent mini, but I couldn't deny you the opportunity to look this fly any longer. They're designed to afford you a discreet opportunity to show off your support for the channel. And after some viewer feedback testing the merchandise, it was discovered that plenty of people were having a book in rotator cuff surgery on account of all the high fives they were getting. These people right here are the channel patrons. And thanks to their financial support, I can sit in my basement and make these dorky little videos. So to each of you, thank you so much for your encouragement. I also hope you like the paint pot ideas because that's where the budget's going. So what is next for the Blood Angels? Surely these guys need a chaplain to guide them and maybe even a Death Company Dreadnought to expand this side of the force. Otherwise, I have Outrider bikes, more Assault Marines, or anything else you recommend to me. So in the comments below, point me in the right direction. I've been Mike, this guy has been spilling his cranberry juice all over my nice carpet, and you, you've been the encouragement that I needed today. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.